Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, five years ago, uh, there was a conference, Schumpeterian conference. The main subject of the session is uh, why China and Asia rises. So at that time, I proposed my theory of a metabolic growth theory, because we know growth there are two mainstream theories. If we believe in solo, you have an exogenous theory that the growth will be convergence, right? But if we believe in Roma theory of endogenous growth, knowledge is accumulated capital, then you have a divergent process. And China certainly did not fit either of the category. So we're back to the idea of Adam Smith and Schumpeter, because you know the capital is not just simply accumulated. Then diffusion from a center, let's say from the United States or Britain, diffused to the developing countries. Capital is a rise and a fall along with the technology. Right? If you have a falling technology goes down with its uh, capital. In that way, we can understand the rise and the fall of a industry and the rise and the fall of countries. So I remember 70 years ago, the issue is not, not why China uh, will be rice. The issue is uh, Needham's question. Why the capitalism and the science originated in Western Europe, not in China? At that time, a lot of people blame China's culture, Confucianism, conservatism. So China is uh, hopeless in modernization. And uh, soci one sociologist, Wallace Time, observed a puzzle. You know, the war bifurcation at that time was uh, occurring in the 15th century. At that time, Western Europe has a lot of land, but insufficient population because of Black Death. And China just opposite. So according to economic rationality, China should expand, like uh, Spain and the Portuguese, and Europe should double their population. But the history is just opposite, right? Why is that? I will remind uh, people the most fundamental contribution of Adam Smith is its uh, volume one, chapter three subjects called division of labor is limited by the market extent. Okay, what's the market extent? People certainly know if you have a small city and large city, certainly a large city and large market, everybody knows. However, Marcel remind us there's more severe constraint, that's ecological constraint, where you have a resource limit, what you can do. Then you can see for the old China, they were digging in deep. In the small land, they uh, provide more food for population. So even at the Roman time, uh, 2,200 years ago, average family owned land, the land size was 100 times more than Chinese family. In that way, I will characterize what's a Chinese characteristic. It's not started from now. It's a study from 2,200 years ago, even 2,700 years ago. Chinese division of labor is characterized by resource saving, but the labor intensive technology, okay, like intensive farming. But the Western technology was characterized by resource intensive, but the labor saving technology. You agree? All the way to industrial revolution to uh, maybe 10 or 20 years ago. Now, there's a change in time. Why? Because of uh, climate you know, warming, because there's a limitation of uh, ecological constraint. So the large scale production is no longer the mainstream uh, production uh, model. So that's why we have to have a change. And uh, I made a modification of a Smith theory. Say, division of labor is not only limited by market stand. You have a three type of a constraint. Secondly, you're limited by the resource variety, right? If you discover new energy, uh, new resource, you can lift 
the existing ceiling. That's why tech, science and technology, not capital, not the money, is a driving force of our growth. Okay. But there was a third factor because uh, I was trained as a physicist, you know. If the environment has a large volatility, okay, so a complex system will break down into a simpler system. Okay. So there's a trade-off between stability and complexity. That's why I would say China succeeded more than Eastern Europe and Russia because China introduced dual track reform system. They can simultaneously introduce innovation but also preserve stability. So right now I will introduce a new term of our new science <coughs> derived from Adam Smith because once you reach uh, market extent, non-reality play a major role. Then you have a complexity. So competition is not just dominating, let's say, scale economy, increasing returns. That's uh, unstable. You have no equilibrium solution. Now you have competition, you have not just quantity, but also quality and also variety. If you go to China, you can see China restaurants have more variety than Western food, right? So that's why Alibaba and uh, uh, EU can f uh, fl uh, flourish, not just a few dominating big firms like uh, for the production. Okay. So that's a new way of, 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 uh, of competition. In this way, I think China also introduced new way of uh, institutional transformation. In the old way, how to set a rule of law, debate in the Congress, all the way from uh, Greek, Roman, right? You have a partisan debate, then you, you have a political uh, uh, deadlock. And China, in the past 30 years, introduced so many new rules, abolished so many old rules without civil war. That's a miracle. How can they do that? I was say Deng Xiaoping invented one thing. I call decentralized experiments. Okay, don't argue, just try it. Different provinces try different approach, and one succeeded, other provinces imitate. So the driving force is local governments, competition between local government, central government only afterwards, you know, make harmony, then a lot of, you know, uh, re reform at the beginning was illegal. The same thing like the United States, right? If you look at uh, rise of uh, Microsoft, the rise of Apple, a lot of things at the beginning was uh, illegal. So if you have uh, only a transparent but a fixed rule, you discourage innovation. So I will in introduce Schumpeter's idea, what's uh, uh, modernization? It's a uh, creative destruction, okay? Not just, uh, uh, protect <coughs> property right. So I will revive the old idea of so-called industrial cycle, because it's not cycle, not repeating. Your scientific term I will call wavelets. If you divide the wavelet into four stages, at the initial stage, like we do research in university, you don't know how to make profits. Okay, at that time, only non-profits, university and government invest. You, you don't have property right. But when you have a takeoff stages, then private industry comes in, you may also have a bubble. But when you reach mature stage, you need the antitrust law to encourage new innovators, not just uh, uh, controlled by the old obsolete industry. When you have decline, Keynesian plays a role, right? You need to help the decline industry, they have to make a transition. So I would say institutional changes is not a static rule. It's a rise and a fall. In that way, I would say China uh, revived the old wisdom because if we remember uh, evolutionary idea, that was uh, first started by Marthas, then uh, stimulates Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin stimulates Karl Marx. But equilibrium people simply forgot. They are original idea from, from Britain. So from this uh, age, I would say we face a new global age, new information age. Now the main thing is not mainstream because classical economics simply makes 
orthodox mainstreams. Now we see a more pluralist world, so the competition is about complexity and diversity. In that way, I would say we need a more inclusive uh, development and more dialogue between different cultures because every culture has its advantages and uh, weakness to adapt to their local environments. Now we have uh, new transportation technology, so we have uh, more uh, opportunity for inland countries and uh, poor countries to develop. So in this way, I fully support Justin Lin's idea, we need a new structural change, new structural economics, and we also thanks Dr. Wen Yi to revive the old idea of a history play role. Once you have a evolution, history matters, not just equilibrium to a convergence. In that way, I would say we need a, a, a rethinking the contribution of Adam Smith. When Adam Smith proposed the idea of an invisible hand, you know what example he raised? He said, when a Dutch uh, merchant you know, transports the uh, grain from Königsberg to uh, Portuguese, you will not make the ship empty back. You may uh, sell you know, wine and, and, and uh, fruits back to, let's say, Eastern Europe. However, do you think the value is the same? No. So Smith was wrong. He said that the ship will automatically create trade balance. It's not. Even for British tea deficit, trade deficit, that of course, uh, you know, open war. Britain used 170 years to reach trade balance. And uh, that's the same reason you can see United States, they have a persistent trade deficit since 1970, similar to the, the Britain case. So I would say the reason is simple, because price system alone cannot make long-term adjustments. Okay because the, the development is uh, essentially non-equilibrium and complex, so we need a multinational coordination and, di and a dialogue. Not just one rule, let's say, free trade or flexible exchange rate can solve the problem. So that's the new idea of complexity and the diversity, and we're back to the Hayek's idea of spontaneous order. As a physicist, my teacher Prigogine always say self-organization and a complex system. So that's a completely different paradigm rather than Newton's deterministic approach. Thank you. Thank you.